Time now for your JCTV Daily News Update with the latest in news. Adopted by Stutzman County as part of its Wind Farm Zoning Ordinance last spring. Covering your local weather. Monday will start to cool off, but there is no snow in the weekend forecast. And the latest in Jimmy Athletics. Rantipa dribbles to the right wing. Now on the corner right side, Variato 3, got it! For your JCTV Daily News Update, here's Ronnie LaCroix. Good evening, Jamestown. I'm Ronnie LaCroix with your JCTV Nightly News Update. In local news, the Jamestown Hospital Foundation has raised its first million dollars in less than a year, according to the Jamestown Sun. Foundation Director Jane Barnes is optimistic another two million will flow into the coffers to support the new regional medical center. The price tag for construction of the Jamestown Regional Medical Center is estimated at 52 million, and 46 million of that is through the USDA loan. Jamestown Hospital CEO Marty Richmond said, I don't have any concern about raising $2 million. This is a close-knit community that has always helped in the past with equipment and other needs. I feel our community realizes how important your health is and how important having a good hospital if you need it is. The Jamestown Regional Medical Center is set to open in the fall of 2011. In state news, the North Dakota Game and Fish Department says there are no worries about fish kill when several reservoirs in southeastern North Dakota are drawn down, but anglers should be aware of weakened ice. According to the Jamestown Sun, state, federal, and local agencies plan to release water from the reservoirs to make room for spring snowmelt runoff in the Red and James River basins. Game and Fish District Fisheries Supervisor Jean Van Eckout in Jamestown says water levels are or will be drawn down at Lake Ashtabula, Lake Lemoore, Clawson Springs, and Dead Colt Creek and Brewer Lake. For your weather, today was a high of 30 degrees and mostly cloudy with low winds around 7 miles per hour. Saturday is going to warm up a little more to 34 degrees and with some moisture in the air, expect a chance of snow in your evening. For Sunday, it's going to cool down to about 32 and the sun will be shining with, a, with low winds and a little bit of cloud coverage. For your weekend's five-day forecast, expect rain and snow mix on Monday with temperatures around 33 degrees. Tuesday is going to be a high of 39 degrees and will bring us rain, something we haven't seen in a while. Wednesday is going to cool off a little with a high of 36 and a chance of showers. Thursday is going to be pretty, was going to be pretty with, one high, with a high of 36 and sunny skies. Same of Friday with the highs around 35 and expect clear blue skies. For Jimmy Sports, two Jimmy Relay teams rolled on to the finals at the NAIA Indoor National Meet in Johnson City, Tennessee on Thursday. The 4x8 team of Alyssa Bossler, Emily Bentley, Maddie Horning, and Katie Conlin won a preliminary time of 1917.16 for a new Jamestown College indoor and overall school record. The finals of the 4x8 relay are tonight at 6.45 p.m. The Jimmys also advanced to the Saturday finals in a distance medley relay. Bossler, Horning, and Conlon combined in this relay with Marissa Curry to record the, five, the fifth best time in the semifinals. 12-19.17 of the 29 teams competing. On the men's side of the things, Josh Ewall currently has 2,600 points in the heptathlon. His best event was the men's 60-meter dash that he took third place in. The men's 4x8 relay team ran a 7.55.97 in the preliminary round yesterday. The time was season best for the 4x800 team, but not good enough to qualify for finals. On Saturday, Andrew Stone will compete in the pole vault. Things are looking good for the Jimmy wrestling team also at the national meet over in Oklahoma City. Only one Jimmy has been eliminated from the tournament and all the rest have a shot of placing Stone. Sean Blumhart lost his first match yesterday and will attempt to get into the placing match on the loser side of the bracket. Joseph Michael won his first match of the day, then lost his second match and is currently wrestling through the loser's side of the bracket. Brandon Rarick also had the same opening day results. Pat Nord won his first match of the day and lost his second. In his first match on the loser side of the bracket, he advanced so he still has a chance to third place. Anthony Clay also had a tough starting day and won his first, lost his second, and lost his second match. BJ Mosley lost his first match but rebounded in the second of second of the day. Willard Hernandez won his first match and lost his second match. Aaron Field lost his first of the day and will be on the consolation side now. An interesting twist, Fields and Hernandez might have to go head to head today because both are on the same side of the bracket and Field, and Field only needs to win one match. 
In other sporting news, the softball and baseball teams have a fun spring break planned. They're traveling to Arizona and Florida for their first tournaments of the season. JCTV news anchor Matthew Neese caught up with the baseball team to get their outlook on their season. This past Sunday and Monday, the Jimmy baseball team headed to the Metrodome and opened up their preseason. The Jimmies, loaded with young talent and veteran experience, have high expectations for this coming baseball season. One veteran player the Jimmies will be relying on is junior relief pitcher Tyler Wilson. Wilson will again be in the Jimmy bullpen after returning from serving in Iraq with the Marines. I left uh, school here in Jamestown November of 2008 and I got deployed to Iraq in March of 2009. I was there for seven months. We came back October 14th of uh, last year. Um, well, we got there. I mean, and it was you know it was hot. You know, we got there and it was 100 and you know 10 degrees right off the bat. And uh, we unloaded our stuff and you know we moved into our uh, fob that we were on, the base that we stayed at. And um, right there, I mean, it was you know it took about a month, month and a half to adjust to the living over there. Since his deployment, Wilson has had a different outlook on life. This maturity has not gone unnoticed by his coaches or teammates. He actually came out and watched us in the 2008 College World Series and you know he made an impact us on us from the second that we met him and over the last uh, year and a half um, w whenever you're around him or near him you, you just know that he does it the right way. I think just having him on a team just because he went to overseas is a you know a building thing for us you know we can relate to him. I, oh, I can't like, we received two tours over there and you know just having him on our you know on our team's kind of awesome. He's fought for us overseas, you know, last year and then he's fighting with us in our dugout this year. Last year the Jimmies made it into the NAIA national tournament. This year they are looking to build upon that success. With pitchers like Lucero and Wilson, not to mention explosive hitters and a good coaching staff, the Jimmies are very likely to achieve their goals. Thanks, Matthew. Tune in when we return from spring break Monday, March 15th for updates on Jimmy Track, wrestling, basketball, softball, and baseball. Thanks for tuning in tonight. I'm Ronnie LaCroix, connecting the campus with the community. Have a safe and fun weekend. We will see you on the 15th.